in a world where the key to immortality is the sharing of knowledge. Never stop learning. To know this. Featuring four state-of-the-art classrooms and introducing five fully equipped MOT test bays for cars, trucks. Open in Manchester. Tom, that looks great. I think we should go and see that. Oh, absolutely, Robert. And we're going to satisfy our thirst for knowledge at just that new VI centre. And what are we going to be looking at? Of all the things on a vehicle, brakes are the safety critical area that are foremost in people's minds. They must be maintained in a roadworthy condition, in other words, in good working order. So the checks during the MOT test are crucial? They certainly are. <laughs> Shall we nip out that? Yeah. Keep your head down. So here we are, Tom, a brand new VI centre, complete with everything that you'd find at a test station. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. What do you think? Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah, and it's the ideal location for us to look at brakes. Yeah. I need to point out at this time that we'll be concentrating on the condition of brakes and not on brake performance. That we'll be dealing with at a later date. OK, where do we start? Well, well let's go inside. Yeah. Right, and this is it, Robert. These are the new facilities, uh, hoists. Uh, roller brake tester equipment, uh, classrooms, it's all here. And here's our car, it looks brand new. Yeah, it is, it's a brand new vehicle. The reason we're using a new vehicle is it's much clearer on the video to pick up the components. However, I do have examples of worn components that we can look at. OK, and what's the tester got to do? Well, basically three areas. Inside the vehicle, under bonnet checks, and checks underneath the vehicle. And can the tester do this on their own? Certainly on the underbonnet checks and the underside of the vehicle, they will need an assistance, so they can't do those sections on their own. In this programme, we're looking at uh, condition only. Does that mean the tester has to use their judgement? Yes, and this is where their experience and judgement really comes into play, and they will consider whether replacement, repair or adjustment is necessary, and if they're confident that's the case, then the component fails. Don't forget, all the information you need is in the inspection manual. OK, where do we start? Well, I need to get inside the vehicle, so would you like to join me? Yeah. The car's parked, so we'll start with the pipe brake. Are there many different types of handbrake? Yes, there are many different types, and that's why we don't call them a handbrake, we call them a pipe brake. There's air-assisted, full air, and these you'll find on heavier vehicles, and that subject we'll deal with in a video at a later date. You may have hydraulic, mechanical, they may be floor mounted, dash mounted or operated by foot. What are the minimum operational requirements? Minimum requirement is it must operate on at least two road wheels or in the case of a three wheeled vehicle, one road wheel. And what are you testing for? Are they all assessed in the same way? They're all assessed to the same criteria and what we're checking for is presence, operation, condition, and that covers wear, corrosion, security. This particular vehicle has the more common type of pipe brake. It's floor mounted. And any components that I can see, I can check for wear, corrosion, security. If I can't see them, I can't test them. In terms of operation, I would just simply take hold of the pipe brake lever and move it from side to side. And that 
could give me an indication of the security, whether it's bolted securely to the vehicle. And then I would apply the pipe brake without holding the release button, so I can hear the pawl right across the ratchet. until it's fully applied. When it's in that position, I'd lightly tap it, move it from side to side, and if the pawl were to disengage from the ratchet when I did that, it would fail. Now it's in the full position, if when I reach that stage, there's no possibility of further travel, in other words, it's come right up against its stop, then it would fail. If I were dealing with a vehicle that had a quick release, such as the type they often put on rally cars or sports cars. To feel the operation of the pawl and ratchet, I would hold a button in on those to hear it right across the ratchet. And finally, some vehicles have a hydraulic pipe brake, and this would be acceptable if they were first used before the 1st of January 1968. Of course, for vehicles that are post the 1st of January 1968, they have hydraulic pipe brakes, but they also have mechanical pipe brake as well. And if it were fitted with the cables or rods, and that was how the pipe brake was applied, that would be acceptable. OK, that's the pipe brake. What about the foot brake? OK, we call it a service brake, Robert. And uh, yes, there are checks that are conducted on the service brake from inside the vehicle. Well, the only bit of the uh, service brake that I can see is the pedal. So what sort of checks can you do from inside the vehicle? From here, we can operate the service brake and we would be checking for the amount of travel and for fouling. So just simply depress it and assess that travel. If the pedal sank right down and there was no reserve travel, then it would foul. And during that operation, you can feel for any fouling and assess whether it's acceptable or not. Now, those uh, two checks that you've spoken about for travel and for fouling uh, apply to all service brake systems, but there are some system-specific checks, aren't there? Yes, there are. For example, on hydraulic service brake systems, uh, we would conduct a check for pedal creep. I'll make two applications, then I'll hold the pedal, and if it tends to creep down or feel spongy, it fails. Tom, are all of these checks uh, conducted with the engine switched off? That's a very good point. There are servo checks, and we refer to them as a servo dip check, that must be conducted in conjunction with the engine. So I simply deplete the service brake, hold that moderate constant pressure, start the engine, and I feel the pedal sink as the servo reacts. Now, some modern vehicles, it's quite difficult to detect this dip. And so it really needs a light pressure on such vehicles. So if they carried out the function and felt no dip, they would repeat the process with a light pressure held on the pedal, go through the process, and then they should feel the pedal dip. If there's no dip, absolutely none at all, the vehicle fails. And there are a couple of uh, important points to do with creep, aren't there, Tom? Because uh, some vehicles, uh, with the engine running and pressure applied to the service brake, uh, the pedal will creep nearly to the floor. Yes, it does. And what you're referring to are diesel vehicles that have a high level of servo boost. And the reaction here is if you hold the pedal with the engine running, it will gradually move towards the floor. And it's a considerable movement, but it must never reach the floor. Uh, this is referred to in consolidated special notices, whereby you know, you, a tester will ensure that it's acceptable provided there are no other defects, such as hydraulic fluid losses, checking the mass asunder reservoir. What about uh, vehicles fitted with uh, full power um, hydraulic systems? OK, on full power hydraulic systems, we do conduct a check from inside the vehicle, and some testers confuse this with the servo check, and they are two different checks. And what we're checking for is that should the engine fail, for example, there will still be enough stored energy in the power system to stop the vehicle or control the speed of the vehicle. This is simply done by having the ignition on with the engine switched off and there will be a warning light, so that indicates that you no longer have the engine running. And then apply the service brake pedal. And you need at least two applications of energy left for the vehicle to be acceptable. And you can very often hear this. As you apply it, you can either hear a sound or you can feel a clicking sensation, which lets you know that, the, that there is stored energy there. 
Now, some testers have a concern because they can't necessarily feel this reaction without the engine running on the service brake pedal. They can set the front wheels of the vehicle into the roller brake tester, and with the engine switched off and the warning light showing, they run the roller brake testers and they apply the pedal and they can see the response on the roller brake tester gauges and that tells them that there is still a reaction there, there is still a stored energy. In reality on the modern vehicles there are many, many applications still available when the power source is gone. And finally what about ABS? On the ABS they will check to make sure that the lamp is not missing, that it's there, that it's functional and it meets the ABS sequence requirement which is different for different vehicles. Manufacturers handbooks have this information. Certainly the ABS data charts which are carried in all vehicle testing stations have that information or they may have ABS reference data books. OK, what do we do now? What next? I have to look down in here, Robert. So I'll need to get out the vehicle for this. I need to be down here to see these components. Um, some of us more mature testers prefer to carry out this check when it's on the hoist and we can get it up to about waist height. Makes it that bit easier. I'll certainly need a lead light. Very often vehicles can be completely covered in down there. Tester can't see anything at all, can't see it, you can't test it. But fortunately this one uh, is clear and I can get right down in and check. So on a vehicle like this one where you can see everything, what are you looking for? Well, I'd be looking for security of the pedal and its pad and its lever. Um, where in the spindles, the cross spindles, there's clevis pins in there, there's, you know, locking devices, retaining devices. Also, once again, it's prescribed area up in and around where the mountings are, uh, of the pedal assembly fit to the vehicle. I'll be looking for those defects and positive hydraulic leaks. If I come back here to the anti talk about the anti-slip device, um, there's a quite a bit of confusion over this. Underneath this rubber is the metal pad, and that is the pedal pad we talk about. The rubber is an anti-slip device. Some vehicles will have um, little raised pips on them. They don't have rubber. It's metal. That's their anti-slip device. Some of them have ridges, earlier vehicles particularly, metal pad with ridges across. When they are worn smooth, it's a fail. Now, I have here a rubber anti-slip device. And you can see that on that, there's like a pattern that the manufacturers put on there. But rubber in itself is an anti-slip device. And the fact that the middle of this is worn smooth still means it's anti-slip. It's acceptable. That would not fail. And of course, if this were the type of anti-slip device and it were not fitted, it were missing, then it would fail for that. So here we are on the underbonnet check, Robert. The first thing we're going to consider is that we need an assistant. So we have Paul inside the car, and he's going to operate the brakes as we need them. Uh, also use a lead light, because it uh, helps me to see what I'm looking at. Now, this particular vehicle has service brake components on the underbonnet. Some vehicles may have, say, dash-mounted or floor-mounted pipe brake, and we would be considering on those prescribed area levers, rods, cables, relay joints, all those kind of components. And we'll talk more about those when we do the underside check of the vehicle. OK, Tom, well, let's talk about uh, this vehicle, because the setup here is quite common. And as you say, there are just uh, service uh, brake components to be checked here. Yes, there are. We're going to check these components without the engine running. And we are going to be checking it later on with the engine running with the brake applied and without the brake applied as per the inspection manual. So if I start around here with my lead light and we'll start with the master cylinder reservoir. Check that the cap's there. If it were missing, it would fail. Testers should not remove the cap. We're going to check the security. We're going to check the level of the fluid. And if it were dangerously low, that means it's significantly below the minimum level, it would fail. Underneath here is the master cylinder. Check that for security. Down behind the master cylinder is the servo. And on this particular vehicle, you can see the retaining bolts for the pedal box. Also, once again, it's prescribed area. We can see that there are hydraulic pipes 
and we'd be checking the hydraulic pipes right through for their condition, damage, corrosion, kinking, and also that they're secure and not free to vibrate. And there's a whole collection of them down here, and they're held together with a, a clamp bracket to keep them secure, not free to vibrate. We also have the servo pipe, and we would check that component uh, for kinks, leaking, and so on. So in fact, uh, you, what you're doing is checking every part of the braking system that you can see from under the bonnet? Yes. Paul, could you make sure the pipe brake's on, it's out of gear, and start the engine, please? OK, brake on. And now I'm checking all the joints of the pipe. I can also check and listen for, for any servo leaks or any leaks from the servo pipe, following around and checking for any hydraulic leaks from any of the pipes uh, that are in here. And if I had hoses, I'd check it on the hoses. OK, release brake, please, Paul. And I'll check once again, because, as I've said, we're checking with the brake, without the brake applied. Thanks very much. Switch the engine off, please. So that completes that check. Are there any other major components that are quite uh, common to find that just don't happen to be on this vehicle that need check-in? Yes. Say, for example, that you've got a, a vehicle that's got the service brake control comes through on the right-hand side of the vehicle, but the servo or master cylinder assembly is on the left-hand side, and there would be connector rods, and you'd need to check those rods for their security and condition, etc. It could be that the vehicle's got inboard discs. If it's got inboard discs, and particularly, let's say, as well as that, it's got the pipe brake that works on the front, on those inboard discs. You'd be checking the calipers and the discs, etc. And, and I will explain more about those when we're on the underside of the vehicle. You can have hydraulic pumps uh, for power brake systems, check them for leaks. You could have accumulators, and those you check for, you know, their, their condition, their security, leaks, corrosion damage, etc. might be that there's some reservoirs on certain vehicles that you would check for those type of defects. So, in fact, there's quite a lot more that needs to be checked under the bonnet compared to inside the vehicle. Oh, there certainly is, yes. Tom, I see you've still got your assistant in the vehicle. Yes, and it's very important to make sure the assistant's in the vehicle before you raise the hoist. Now, we're going to carry out checks underneath the vehicle. Normally, you would check all of the components, we're going to concentrate on the braking system. And do you do the same checks that we did under the bonnet? Yeah, pretty much the same checks. Uh, we're considering, you know, um, presence, operation, condition, but we'll also be checking other components because you can see much more of the braking system. So before we go under, you're going to need one of these. So we'll put that on. And uh, I'll need my lead lamp. And we'll just check with our assistant. Paul, could you make sure the pipe brake's on? It's out of gear and start the engine, please. Come under there with me. Release the pipe brake. So we're going to have the, the, the brake applied and we're going to check for leaks in the system, the pressurizer system. OK, Paul, service brake, hard on. Now I'm checking the hoses for bulging or leaks, any leaks around the brake caliper assembly any leaks on the pipework that I can see. Just following around in case there's any pipework related to here. Once again, hoses, same checks, caliper assemblies, following around behind the wheel, coming across brake pipes here. And normally, we would follow looking for any of these components that are down the offside of the vehicle. Um, on this particular one, there aren't any. So now we've come to the rear of the vehicle. And I'm going to be checking here for any sign of leaks on any of the pipes here, or anything that I can see, any sign of leaks around the drum or the back plate coming through and through to the pipe. Once again, brake hoses, same checks, bulging leaks. Following through the brake pipe. Here we have a valve assembly, checking for any signs of leaks on the valve assembly. Service brake off, Paul. Service brake on again. See the operation, we know it's not seized. And once again, checking through the pipework 
and the condition of the house under pressure and the pipe work up into the wheel cylinder, no sign of leaks around the drum or the back plate. Coming back down, following the pipe work, this is you know, all under pressure still. Any signs of leaks? In here we have these adapters, checking these for leaks with the brakes under pressure. And now we've gone full circuit. So has that completed the checks on the service brake? It's completed the checks with them under pressure as we look around the component. We've still got pressure on it because we're now going to check um, on the brake hoses in particular uh, with it on the turn plates. Now normally this would be incorporated with a steering check, so we're just going to concentrate on the brake hoses. And it's a lock to lock check. OK, Paul, full left hand lock, please. And now we're checking that the hoses aren't stretched, kinked or twisted. Full right hand lock, please. Now we're checking that there's no fouling, no kinking, no twisting. Straighten up now, Paul, please. Now we would repeat all those processes on the lock to lock on the offside wheel as well. But for the purpose of this, we're just checking this one wheel. OK, Paul, switch the engine off, please. So now do you need to check the service brake with it not under pressure? Yes, we do. And that would incorporate jacking of the vehicle uh, to check some of the components. So what we'll do for the purpose of this exercise, we're going to move towards the back of the vehicle, and before we jack it up, we're going to check the rigid brake pipes and their condition and security and so on. And we're also going to check the park brake. So here we have the park brake outer cables here, one on this side, one on the off side. And what would you do if um, these cables were, were damaged or split? If the outer cables were damaged or split, provided they didn't affect the operation of the inner cable, then they would not fail. And the security, you can see this one's held in the clip here. If this were not in the clip, then that wouldn't be a failure. Paul, are you ready? Can you hold the button in, please, on the pipe brake and just let it on and off? Checking up in here, and we can see the cable going in and out. So we can see that there's no fouling, no seizure on its operation. We conduct these checks on the other cable as well. Right, thanks very much, Paul. You can stop operating the pipe brake and leave it in the on position, please. Thanks very much. Now, we would also be checking the condition of the rigid pipes. On this particular vehicle, it's very new. And you can see how well they're coated. It doesn't matter about the age of the vehicle. The person's not allowed to remove any of this coating when testing a vehicle. And I have some older brake pipe, and I'll demonstrate how we would check for corrosion you know, on a pipe with, with a corrosion assessment tool. Some vehicles, you cannot see the brake pipes. In fact, because of their design, the front to rear brake pipes actually go inside the body. If you can't see them, you can't test them. Now, this brings me, finally, on this section, to the prescribed area. When we were in the vehicle, I said we can't see any of the prescribed area and you would have a better chance underneath. Well, on this particular vehicle, very little of the prescribed area can you see because of the heat shield. Although, some of this area around here, on both sides, would be prescribed area, so we can check that much. On most vehicles, that would be completely clear and you'd be able to get a good view of it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to jack the vehicle up. Before we conduct any checks, we need to point out, say, for example, if the vehicle had ABS braking, then the ignition must be switched off before the tester ever rotates the wheel. Because on this check, you know, with, the, with the lead light, we can look in if there are holes in the wheel, and we can check condition of the disc from this side, possibly the brake pads. On some vehicles, it's possible to see them on this one. You can't really see the brake pad condition. But on some vehicles, uh, you wouldn't be able to see anything, would you? No, some of them are completely sealed, and if you can't see it, you can't test it. And then we'll bring the wheel round on lock, so that we can now, with the torch, inspect the components behind the wheel. At the top here, we need to check the condition of the hose to see if it's cracked, exposing the reinforcement. Check around here for the brake caliper. Is it secure? Are the retaining and locking devices there? It might be possible to see the brake pads. Sometimes you can see the disc clearly. 
on this particular vehicle, as you rotate it, you can only see parts of the disc. We'll be checking and looking in here. There's a dust cover in here, and some people consider that that's uh, quite a strong component and it can be failed. Well, it, it's only a light dust cover. And those are the kind of checks that we will be conducting on these wheels. We carry out those same checks on the, on the near side wheel. And what about uh, the rear wheels? Because, of course, you can't move them in the same way. No, we can't. We could have the vehicle jacked, so you expose more of the, uh, the components. Um, and you'll be checking the back plate so that if a retaining device, a bolt, were missing, it would fail. Or if it were loose, it would fail. If any of the locking devices were missing, it would fail. A lot of testers consider the back plates can be failed for corrosion. Well, they can't. Corrosion is not a failure defect on back plates. This is a hydraulic brake system on this vehicle. On some earlier vehicles, you'll have rod and cable brakes. Even for the service brake? On the service and the park brake, yes. And on such vehicles, say for example on the cables, you would be checking the condition of the cables. Are they knotted? If they were knotted, they'd fail. Or are the strands broken or corrosion that significantly weakens the cable? If so, it would fail. You'd be checking the rods for their thickness. If they're worn by more than a third, they would fail. Um, there's clevis pins, there's stationary pins, there's relay levers, uh, the condition of those, and whether they're seized, operational, whether they're secure, all the locking retaining devices are secure and are in place. Now, Tom, this, uh, as you've said, is a brand new vehicle, so all of the components that we've been looking at are in perfect condition, but you have got some not-so-new components for us to have a look at, haven't you? Yes, I have. I've got some worn examples for us to look at, so we'll do that now. Tom, what have we got here? Well, I've got an array of bits, uh, Robert. We've got pipes, hoses, pads and discs. Here, for example, is a brake pipe and it's coated and uh, tester cannot remove the coating. But there's an exposed section here that's got corrosion on it. And all the tester would be entitled to do is, with a corrosion assessment tool, they could s slightly scrape away any excessive corrosion. Okay. And what would be a fail here? A fail here would be if they considered that it was eaten away by corrosion by a third of the thickness of the wall of the pipe, then it would fail. This particular pipe here, this is a repaired pipe. It's got a flared end. Um, uh, but what somebody's done is they've fitted a joint on here that is too large, and therefore it's an unsuitable joint, and it would fail for that. Also, if it's been repaired inadequately, say, for example, with compression joints, that's not acceptable. It has to be flared ends. On the brake hoses, we've got a brake hose here, and you can see, if I ex expose it here, you see the heavy perishing there, but it's not gone through to the reinforcement, so that wouldn't fail. That would be a pass and advise. Same on this end. But we have a hose that has actually gone through to the reinforcement, so that would be a fail. At the other end of the hose, it's been exposed to excessive heat. That fails, even though it doesn't go through to the reinforcement. Now we move on to brake pads. This brake pad is a failure. Very, very thin. If it's less than 1.5 millimetre in thickness at any point, it fails. That's a criteria. It's a measurable criteria. If a tester wants to consider what is 1.5 millimetre, a new five pence piece is 1.5 millimeter thick. Is this difficult to assess though when it's in situ? It, it is difficult, but on some vehicles that assessment can be made. Here we've got a disc here. Now, to fail a disc, it must be excessively worn, scored or pitted. Now there's evidence of corrosion here, but this disc has not pitted. It's not scored, it's not excessively worn. So on condition, this disc would be a pass and advise. And this disc, this has got considerable wear. You can see the heavy lip here, but it's not scored or pitted. And there's still plenty of thickness of disc there, so this would be a pass and advise. Tester would also need to check, this is a vented disc, that there's no fractures in the vents. Finally, this disc here, this has got 
a fracture, and you can just see the fracture in there, and that fracture would be a fail. Testers must not confuse that with the heat cracking, because very often on a disc, you can get fine heat cracking. That doesn't go right into the disc, so that would be has an advice. Whereas this crack goes all the way through. Yes, so that would be a failure. So, Tom, is that everything that we need to know about uh, brake condition? Brake condition, yes. Uh, at a later date, we will be dealing with a video for brake performance. So that just gives you time to have a good look at the facilities we have here at Chatterton. Well, we'll certainly have a good look round, Tom. And in fact, many testers will have the chance to come here to improve their knowledge, won't they? Yes, they will. We have equipment for all the classes of vehicles, uh, right up to including heavy goods and PSV. Our own staff can come here, the commercial courses can be here, everything for people to calibrate their skills. Brilliant, Tom, thanks very much. My pleasure.